Uh, good morning uh, and greetings to you, beloved. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for joining us today um, on the 7th of April, um, 2024. Um, we are thankful of the Lord's mercy and goodness. And also, we're also grateful that um, the Lord has carried us through the first um, quarter of the year of 2024. Um, we've seen the Lord's faithfulness and we've seen the Lord's goodness. I want to extend greetings um, to members of Arise and Glory Tabernacle. Um, I greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I also want to extend greetings um, to brothers and sisters um, who are part of um, the city of Ekebeha, the Eastern Cape, this nation and this continent, and also those who are joining us um, from other parts of the globe as well. I also greet you, um, our lovely friends and brothers as well, who come onto the page. And we want to thank God for your love, for your prayers, and also for your fellowship in the Lord Jesus Christ. We also want to thank the Lord um, for partners in the faith and want to honor you um, for giving and partnering with the ministry. Um, and may the Lord continue to, to add to your seed, to, to give you increase and to bless your household. And um, over the last couple of weeks, we have been um, spending time looking at a subject, um, the double portion and understanding the grace of the Lord and the requirements of that grace. How does the grace, the, the nature, the divine nature that we have been given, the anointing that the Lord has shared with us, what responsibility does that anointing give to us as his people, as his chosen generation? And so we've been looking at that subject and understanding how in scripture the Lord indeed has always spoken of the message of Christ and how he has always impacted this generation by giving it a mandate, by giving it a function within society and causing his people to always lead and to be able to give his purpose in the nation or in the nations of the world. Um, the time that we live in is no different. There's also a requirement in the time that we live in from the throne. Um, the time that we live in is no different and that God still speaks. That I must say, God still speaks. Um, we serve not a statue, we serve not an idol, but we serve a living God. He's alive. He's alive to hear. He's alive to see. He's alive to touch. And the hand of the Lord is still upon this generation. And the Lord has his representatives. The Lord has his nation in the midst of the world. And he's establishing through the church his own purpose for the world. And he's doing that through the church. So the kingdom of God is advancing through the church of the living God. And so the church is a vitally important aspect in the days that we're living in. Um, what I can say is that there are futures or characteristics of the last days, even in the days that we're living in. And maybe other generations can say the same. But one thing is clear, that the church must be readied and prepared for the coming of the Lord. In every generation, that duty, that responsibility to be prepared for the coming of the Lord rests solely upon the church. And the Lord has equipped the church with leaders and authority to take upon themselves that mandate 
of ensuring that the church will be prepared when he comes. When he comes as the one who owns the house and when he comes as the one to whom it belongs. And so all glory, all honor and all praise belongs to our God. And so the church, when he comes, he must find a glorious church or a glorious bride. He must find a glorious wife. He must find a church without spot, without blemish, and without wrinkle. So he must find the people who understand who they are, and he must always find the people who understand whose they are, and who must understand what is their function within the world. Now, beloved, I want us to read a portion of scripture with the time that I have remaining. Um, today, I want us to look at Isaiah 61, the book of Isaiah, and uh, starting to read from verse 1. The words read as follows. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified and they shall rebuild the old ruins and they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers but you shall be named the priest of the Lord and they shall call you the servants of our God and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast. I want you to look at this and instead of your shame, you shall have double honor and instead of your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct the work in truth. And I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offspring among the people. And all who see them shall acknowledge them. They are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. And I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. And he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, and so the Lord God will also cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. And I want you to see that. It says, before 
all the nations. The Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth. And like I said, that he's using the church to be able to establish his nature and to be able to establish his character in the nations of the world. Father God, we thank you for the double. We thank you for double honor. We thank you for double grace. We thank you that there is a generation of joy. There's a generation that walks in the anointing. Father God, we thank you that there's a generation arising that has the garment of salvation. Thank you for this generation that can give you praise, that can give you glory. For you have given this generation a robe of righteousness. Father God, we thank you that this generation is enlightened to a bride, a bride with jewels, a bride prepared for you, a bride clothed by you. You have given us the anointing to do the works of the Spirit. This is a generation of greater works of God. This is a generation that will do more. And we thank you for your ability, your nature, your function. Oh God, it is your grace. It is your gift. And so, oh God, we bless you. We give you honor. And so this is a generation that will not take your glory. Father God, you must have the glory. And so we avail ourselves as vessels before you, as yielded and broken vessels. Father God, we declare that you are the potter and we are the clay. Father God, fashion, design us and have us in your hands for your own purpose, O oh God. Father God, we thank you for that which you are advancing. Let joy, let peace, let righteousness be advanced through us, O oh God. O oh, Father God, we give you our lives that our lives may give you glory and worship. We thank you for the river of the Spirit, that from our own bellies, O oh God, will flow rivers of living waters. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, for you have given us the Spirit of God, for us to be sons of God. You've made us to be sons. We thank you for your voice. Your voice teaches us. Your voice shows us the scriptures. Your voice guides us. Your voice indeed leads us to purpose. Your voice indeed helps us to represent you. So Father God, stand in us, O oh God. Reveal your face, O oh God, through us, O oh God. Father God, reveal your hand through us, O oh God. Let the finger of the Lord come through, through us, O oh God. Let the finger of God touch our hearts and let the finger of God be used to touch the hearts of many, O oh God. That souls may turn to you, that the lost may come to you, O oh God. That the world in deep-seated darkness will receive the light of the gospel, the glory of the gospel. Father God, we thank you for the glory of God. Father God, let our meetings carry the glory. Let our lives carry the glory. Let our faces show forth the glory. Oh God, it has pleased you to bring many sons into glory. And so we thank you, oh God, you have brought us into glory by your wonderful grace. And so we are grateful for grace upon grace. We are grateful for your strength. Father God, we thank you for divine ability that the sick will be healed, that the sick will recover. We thank you for divine ability for the opening of prison gates, oh God, for the shattering of the oaks and for the shattering of chains. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. We thank you for the divine anointing that you have anointed us with, oh God. Thank you for giving us power. Thank you for giving us authority. For the authority of Christ rests upon us to trample upon the snakes and the scorpions, oh God. Oh, we thank you for that divine power to walk over every creeping thing that does not align to your purpose. For the power of God for the pulling down of every stronghold that you have not exalted for the power of God for the shattering of every ideology that you have not exalted oh God and so we thank you oh God for the armor of the spirit that you have given to your divine church oh God we bless you Jesus we thank you for the spirit of the Lord 
We thank you for the spirit of the Lord. Oramando robo shaya. Renda to hondo kuhaya. We thank you for grace to be able to speak to you. A grace to be able to speak in you. Grace to be able to speak like you. Thank you for grace to hear you. Thank you for grace to see you. You are building your church. And the gates of hell will never prevail against it. And the gates of hell will never prevail against it. For we comprehend the light and darkness has never comprehended the light. We live in a time that darkness cannot overwhelm the light. Thank you for a divine proclamation that let there be light. And in our hearts, we have the prophetic word made more sure. In our hearts, we have the prophetic word confirmed. And in our hearts, we have the prophetic word established. You have raised us to be established in the present speakings of God. You have raised us to become a light in the nations like the sons of Issachar, understanding the times and the seasons. Like the sons of Issachar, understanding the word of the Lord and the function of God's people. We thank you for grace to understand what you are doing in this year. We thank you for grace to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That let there be favor for God's people. Let there be double favor. Let there be double honor. Let there be double praise. We well, thank you for favor in God's houses, in the church, in the ministry, in the families that call upon the name of the Lord. That there will be favor. Oh God, we thank you that your name has been highly exalted. For you have been given the name above every other name. For you, O oh God, have done for us what no man could do. And because of your obedience, and even in suffering, O oh God, it has pleased the Father to give you a name that is above every other name. And so every knee, O oh God, must bow. And every tongue must confess the Lordship of Jesus. So we cry, Lord, and we call you Christ. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that it is you who confirms the word. It is you who has become the sign the wonder and the miracle. You are the sign. You are the wonder. And you are the miracle. We thank you in Jesus name. Beloved of the Lord. I want us to go to Luke chapter 4 verse 16. And I want us to read the word of Jesus. And today I want us to read more scripture and the Holy Spirit to give us an understanding of the things that we're reading. Luke chapter 4 verse 16 to verse 22. And Jesus coming into Nazareth. So it says, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up 
and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. And as he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, and I want you to see something, that he opened the book, and later on he's the very same one who will close the book. The Bible says, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And because he has anointed me, to preach the gospel to the poor and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and then he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, and I want you to see the words that he said. He said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So he bore all witness to him and marveled. And they marveled at the gracious words which proceeded from his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. And wh whatever we have heard done in Kapanaum, do also here in your own country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. And when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, there was a great famine in the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. And so all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they laid him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. So last week we dealt with the subject of Elijah and Elisha. And one of the things that we establish as a pattern, that the picture of Elijah gives us the picture of Christ. And the picture of Elisha gives us the picture of the church that will originate and spring forth from Jesus, who is truly Elijah in its realest sense. Jesus comes in the spirit of Elijah. And in order for you to understand what that means, that Jesus comes in the spirit of Elijah, is that Elijah's ministry was central to restoring the name of the Lord and the salvation of the Lord to the nation of Israel and to establishing God's covenant with the people of God. So when we say that Jesus comes in the spirit of Elijah, we talk about the same spirit of revival, the same spirit of restoration that will come through the ministry of Jesus. When Elijah says, for instance, there will be no rain, he is emphasizing that God is the only source. And unless we find the true source, that there will be no restoration, there will be no salvation, no deliverance, no healing, unless God becomes the one who gives us the cloud and who gives us both the former and the latter rain. So the rain must come from the Lord. And I want you to understand something, that when Jesus comes in Luke chapter 4, he then reads Isaiah's message of prophecy. When he reads Isaiah's message of prophecy, he announces to them that I am the manifestation of this very prophecy. So in other words, he then announces to them that my ministry, it is my ministry that was spoken of here. When Elijah said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he was referring to me as the Messiah. And so right here now I release these words and I proclaim to you, I am here 
to do the work of the Father and to advance the kingdom of the Father. And so within the very same scripture, we then understand what was the core function of how, of why the Lord sent Jesus. The core function of why the Lord sent Jesus is found within the very words released also through Isaiah 61, which here Jesus also read. And I want you to understand something because this generation, which is the church that belongs also to the Lord Jesus must continue the work of Jesus. I'll say that again. This generation, which is the church, which is the true generation of Jesus, must continue with the work of Jesus. And so what, what is the work of Jesus? Isaiah 61 defines the work of Jesus. The work of Jesus is bringing the spirit of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord, to the people of God. The anointing is resting upon your life. The spirit of God is at work in your life. So that you may be able to share the spirit. To share the anointing with another. And when you share the anointing. When you share the spirit with another. This is expressed. Through primarily the preaching of the good news, the sharing of the good news, the releasing of the testimony of the good news. So preaching was intended for the poor and poor here carries not just the essence of poor economically. Poor here refers to someone who does not have Christ in their heart. Someone who does not have Christ in their soul is a poor person. They find themselves in poverty. And in order for us to be delivered from that poverty, we need to acknowledge Christ as our Lord. Christ is the true wealth. Is the true wealth. When the Bible says, it is he who gives us the power to get wealth. It talks about how God will give us Christ. And through Christ, the wealth of the earth will come. The wealth of the earth is not following any other person but Christ. And so when we find Christ, we find wealth. So literally, we are not necessarily in pursuit of riches, materialistically. We are in pursuit of him. And when we find him, he gives us the blessing of the Father or the blessing of God. And what happens with the blessing of the Father? The blessing of the Father will make you very rich. Now Abraham was rich in silver, in gold, in livestock. What made Abraham to be rich was the blessing of God. So when Abraham found the Father, when he found, oh Lord, Melchizedek. When he found the possessor of heaven and earth. When he found the one who owns the heavens. And when he found the one who owns the head. He found everything. In him. And so what we need to understand is that we find in the spirit of the Lord. We find in the nature of the Lord, everything that God is. And this nature and the spirit of God, God seeks that we may impart to another. Through the release of preaching, to the release of teaching, through the release of prophecy. The Bible says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So healing is for all those who are broken. And this refers to both physical, spiritual, and emotional. God will heal. 
God will heal the broken hearted. God will restore his people. And the release of healing is done through God's people. There are gifts of healing that God gives to us. And these gifts should not be dormant. There's also the word of God. The word of God is a powerful word that heals. You can speak the word. You can pray the word. And people will get healed. You can speak the word. You can proclaim the words of Jesus. And people will be set free. The intention of the works of the anointing is to find those who are imprisoned in prison gates, who are held bound, to set them free from the things which are keeping them in prison. People are imprisoned in the mind. People are imprisoned in the soul. And the intention of God was that when Jesus comes into the earth, now I want you to understand something. When Jesus comes into the earth, he came with his anointing. And he came with his spirit. One of the things that we said last week, the anointing of Jesus, ah, never left the earth. The anointing of Christ. That anointing which is the anointing of Christ and the spirit of Christ is the same anointing that is in you and that will also raise you from the dead. And so here's the truth. Your spirit will not die. You will live forever because of the anointing of Christ. And this truth is not just for us. It's for those in the world who are walking in a state of death. In the world, the dead are burying the dead. But there is one in the midst of us who can disrupt the funeral service that is taking place in the lives of men. How does Jesus disrupt the funeral service? He comes in the life of one who was as good as dead and gives them resurrection life. Our ministry is a ministry of raising the dead. And raising the dead has various dimensions. We raise the dead that are sleepwalking, which who are zombies. They do not know God. That is a form of death. To not know God, to not have fellowship with God, to not have a relationship with God. It's a nature of sleepwalking. It's being as good as dead. Now, our ministry is the ministry that those who are dead, we will share with them the mystery of Jesus. And they will awake from their sleep. They will awake from their death because of the anointing. So the anointing is intended to heal the brokenhearted and to set free those who are imprisoned. The anointing is also intended for the recovery of sight. This has various dimensions. One of the other things I wanted to say, God is in the midst of raising the dead. 
is in the midst of raising the dead. And I'm not talking here spiritual death. Even physical death. One of the things that we have proclaimed. Reset. Return. And restore. God is restoring to the church. The anointing to raise the dead. Is restoring to the church of Jesus. The anointing. To set free men from death. Or how the Lord in our generation will raise the, the dead in the midst of us. Or how the Lord in our generation, like in the same way that Lazarus was called to come forth. And the word was released that Lazarus come forth. Although that he had been dead, literally asleep for a number of days. But Jesus came. And Mary was well positioned. There's a church that when he comes to raise the dead, it will be well positioned. It will be understanding why he has come. It will be hearing the call that Lazarus come forth. And right there and then, the dead will rise. The dead will rise. We are in the ministry of the Spirit. It is one thing for us to carry the doctrine. One thing. It's one thing for us to carry the word. But it is another for us to carry the word and the spirit. And the Lord desires balance. The Lord desires balance. And so when we say we have a double portion, it's not necessarily just talking about good things. There's a double portion of responsibility also. There's a double portion of grace also. There's a double portion of honor also. There's a double portion of authority. Authority is given so that it may be used. Let me say that again. Authority is given so that it may be used. God gave authority for us to be effective workers of the ministry of Jesus. The core business, I say this again, the core business of why God called us was not just the proclamation of houses, cars. Those things are not wrong. We can proclaim them. We can set people free so that they receive their things. But remember, these things are byproducts. The main ministry is the condition of the soul and how the soul will be found by Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. E amando lokoya. Alamo shakaya. E kando kohaya. E kando kohoya. Likando kohaya. The issue is that when he comes, he won't be looking how many cars did I drive? How many houses did I own? And here's, here's the balance. We must not desire the mansion more than the mansion that he is. Oh. In my father's house are many mansions. 
in my father's house. When Jesus speaks about the mansion, he's not speaking about the earthly mansion. Jesus is a place himself that we must occupy. He himself is a mansion. He is a place that we must dwell in. And he also desires to dwell in us. Mm. Mm. So in the Father, there are many dwelling places. Ay, 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 ay. Here's the thing. That in this generation, we must find those who are the dwelling places of God. We must bring them to their location. This is a calling. This is a calling. This is a calling. We must find those who are the dwelling places of God and bring them to the place of recovery of sight. They must see. And they must see clearly. And they must see God. It then says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Listen. Many times we proclaim a new year. But you know what happened? After Jesus proclaimed the year of the Lord, he closed the book. Oh. After the year of the Lord's favor, there's no other year that will come again that will release favor upon the earth like Jesus himself. He's the ultimate favor upon the entire world. Jesus is the one who controls the times and the seasons and in every time in every season in every month in every week in every day jesus is the favor that is needed by his people oh. i want us to understand something because we have jesus we have favor and it's not just any type of favor this is double favor. This is more favor than what the world has seen. This is more favor than what the world and mere men have walked into. I want us with the remaining time to go back to Isaiah 61. Other things I will continue on another day. But there are certain principles that I want you to see. Isaiah 61, we've dealt with this one. I want you to see verse 2. Verse 2 talks about the proclaiming of the year, of the acceptable year of God's favor. Here's the thing. This year, spoken of in this particular verse, it talks about being accepted. It's a day of salvation. It's a day of good news. It's a day in which, or a year in which, those who did not have favor will find favor. Those who did not have righteousness will then come into righteousness. That's the year of the Lord's favor. Those who had poverty, the poor, that were poor, that were blind, that were uh, lame, they will now have riches. They will now have wealth. They couldn't see, but now they will see. That's the year of the Lord's favor. Those who did not have the saving grace and even the abilities of God, they will now suddenly come into a year and that Jesus is that year. They will now walk in the ability of Christ. The acceptable year of the Lord's favor. <sighs> Limitations are broken. And so, this is what I want to say. Above calendar periods, which is months, yes, what really declares a set time is the prophetic word of the Lord. Uh, 
a prophetic word of Jesus can just set you into another season altogether. It can just position you in the Lord's favor. Just the prophetic word of Jesus. And so that's the ministry that we have been given. We've been given a ministry that we may proclaim to God's people. What time is it in God? Yo, yo. We've been given a responsibility to proclaim to the Lord's people, what time is it in God? It's not a time necessarily of vengeance. And until he comes, this is a season of grace. So same time, being accepted also means if you've been living in sin, if you've not been living a repented life, if you've not been living in the forgiveness of the Lord, it's a season to come into that. To come into the ministry of reconciliation. It's a season to come into righteousness. Because the season that follows that, can you see, verse 2, and the day of vengeance. So even with grace, even with favor, something will fall. Jesus, the reason why he closed the book, and I want you to see it. He closed the book on favor because he was saying, this is where I will stop and this is what I will do. He's coming again. <laughs> He's coming again to open the book and to read the scriptures. <laughs> He's coming again to open the scroll. <laughs> To read the volume of the book. He says, behold, here I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. <laughs> From Genesis to Revelation, he reveals himself. But on that particular day, the Bible says it was his custom. A man, here comes a man who loves to go to the synagogue. Here comes a man who says, my culture is reading the word. <laughs> Here comes a man who says, when I come into the synagogue on the Lord's day of rest, I become it. Here comes a man who then reveals himself as the word made flesh. And then he announces a season. He says, this is a season of the healing of the broken heart. It's a season of the setting free of those who are in prison. The captives being kept free. He says it's a season of declaring favor. Yo, yo, yo. At that very moment, Jew or Gentile, we were free. At that very moment, we were in a new year of favor. Then he closed the book. Oh, here's the thing. No one will ever declare a curse upon your life. Jesus has closed the book. Oh, no one will ever declare a curse, a season of torment upon your life. Jesus has declared favor upon you. Here is a generation that is caring not only the spirit, the nature, they are carrying the words of Jesus. Ay, ay, ay. They are covered, they are sheltered, they are held in by the very word of the Messiah. It is First John chapter 2 verse 20 that says we have the anointing of the Holy One. In other words, in First John chapter 2 verse 20, we have the anointing of Christ. We have the anointing of Jesus. And so Christ continues to walk in the earth. He does so through you. Now I want you to see something. From favor, he declares vengeance. Now, with vengeance, we must understand something. Evil, we don't repay. We don't return evil. We don't repay it. We don't respond. Who does vengeance belong to? And these are things we must teach. Vengeance 
the Lord says, it's mine. Ah, uh, God will defend you. Oramanda kaya. Eranda kaya yete. Rikando toho ya. The Lord says, vengeance is mine. Oh, shakaya mahaya. Renda tahaya. So concerning his people, God is a jealous God. Ayakaya. You cannot touch God's apple of an eye. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a reason why he says the apple of an eye. Because no man can touch that which is precious to God. And God is a jealous God. You can't touch his people. Ooh. Hurabashataya. I want you to understand something. That in the same way, the enemy could not touch Job. He, he was walking right around the edge. He says, he is blessed because you have hedged him in. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He has a generation that its hedge, it's Christ himself. Its hedge, its time and season is right. It is the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. He has a generation who carries the spirit, who carries the nature of God himself. You can't strike this generation. You can't strike it with a curse. You can't strike its land with a curse. You are divinely protected. Now, here's the thing. In God's house, ne, our main language cannot be demons. And demonology. Demonology I define as everything the believer Hey, Satan is doing this. Hey, the devil is doing this. Hey, hey, have you seen the devil is doing this? Hey, Satan is doing this. Hey, people of God's people are under the, 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 the curse of Satan. No, we don't major in demonology in the house of the Lord. We major in Christology. We understand that which Christ is doing, that which Christ is saying, that which Christ has done. We do not major in demonology I couldn't even care if we wanted to write an encyclopedia and wanted to have a dictionary of demons the names of demons and the functions of demons and the terminology of demons such teachings and writings have no profit for us it does not mean that we do not understand the works of Satan we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We understand the technologies, the systems that he's doing, but what we major upon. Oh, he closed the book. Where did he close it? He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He said, he said, because the Lord has anointed me. The anointing, when it comes, it comes to teach us everything in Christ, about Christ and about us. That's what we, we major in. The anointing was intended that we may know him. Ay, 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 ay. I seek that I may know him. I seek that I may be made conformable to the same pattern and order of his suffering. I seek that I may partake of his glory. We, we major in Christology. That is, that is what he has called us for. And here's the thing now. When this spirit of Christ, when it comes upon us, the Bible says we may comfort those who mourn. Ah. Meaning, even those who are called, even those who are born again, they go through seasons of mourning. Ah. But God has given us his spirit to turn things. When the Bible says we have been given the acceptable year of the Lord's favor, we've been given the ability to turn mourning into dancing. Ah, yeah. Not only has he turned my morning into dancing, he's given me the grace to do so for others. And so we have the ability 
to find who is mourning and then be able to release a word to 10 seasons of mourning for God's people. That is the ministry we've been called for. Mm. God's people will not cry. They will not shed a tear and the Lord will not answer. God is still speaking. God is still healing. God is still redeeming. God is still setting people free. He's still in the ministry of casting out devils. We major in. That demon out. We major in carrying the presence of God. To make demons uncomfortable. That when we will come into an environment, we will come into a region, demons will say, why have you come upon us? Ay, 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 ay. Listen, we are not in the conversations, having dialogue. Dialogues in the apostolic are not for demons. Dialogues in the apostolic are for revealing Christ. And genuine dialogues in the apostolic are not platforms where there is one speaker. Yo. Dialogues in the apostolic, it is a platform where Christ is speaking in and through his people. If the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, and the, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says that he gave some to be. Now, if you read Ephesians chapter 4, you're reading from verse 11, you will understand that therein is not just apostles. It's not even just an apostle. The Bible says, some to be apostles. So even with apostleship, you are not the only apostle. Even with prophets, you are not the only prophet. With teachers, you are not the only teacher. Pastors, evangelists, and so forth. We need to see the whole function as one. Let's leave that there. The Bible says to comfort those who mourn. Now, the giving of the beautiful ashes. Remember, when Isaiah spoke these words, he spoke of Christ. What is the ministry of Christ? I see ashes. You are mourning. Because of ashes, I don't want you to be living on ashes. I'll give you beauty. Beauty there represents grace. I'll give you favor. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you glory. So, who does that now? It's Christ. Through who? Through you. People can walk in ashes. You are there in the workplace. You are there in the household of faith. You are there in the city. You are there in the nation. You will give them beauty. The oil of joy. Where's the oil? First John 2 20, the anointing is in you. Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. Ah, he and even healing those who were oppressed of the devil. What is the anointing for? To do good works, to do good things. I told you that the anointing was not just to proclaim cars and houses. It can do that. Those are byproducts of the blessing that comes through the anointing. But the main core of the anointing, good things in the lives of people and even setting them free from the control of the devil. Ay, 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 ay. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, that the people of God will not have influences of the devil operating in their households. The devil cannot run and rule and reign where God's people are present. The oil of joy for morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
we come into environments that where there is heaviness, where there is depression, where there is turmoil, where there is emotional, there's dryness. We come into those environments to break the heaviness. Ay, 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 ay. It's a grace. <laughs> it's a grace to remove heaviness from regions. It's a grace to remove heaviness from people in the minds of believers. It's a grace to break the heaviness. Now I want you to see this. It says they may be called trees of righteousness. When people see you, they must say there is hope for the righteous. <laughs> oh Lord, restore to this generation grace. <laughs> When people see you, they must say, here comes a righteous man. And there is hope for the city. There's hope for the nation. God is restoring again such weight. <laughs> a weight of the spirit. The trees of righteousness will bring a righteous order on the nation. Let's proclaim it. South Africa is a righteous nation and the righteous will rule. This nation belongs to the Lord. The wicked will not reign. The wicked will not rule the land. South Africa is a righteous nation. May this word become a standard. It says that they may be called the trees of righteousness and the planting of the Lord. Who, who plants them? It's the Lord. And the Bible says that he has planted them so that he may be glorified. I, I pray this you will be planted in your purpose, planted in your calling, planted in your function, planted in your gift that the glory will go to God, planted in the workplace where you belong, that the spirit and nature of the Lord may use you to bring the freedom of the spirit, the liberty of the spirit, Verse 4. I want you to see this. Rebuild old ruins. Raise up former desolations. Repair ruined cities. Desolations of many generations. Three key words. Rebuild, raise, and repair. This is the work of Christ. All these words are speaking of the principle of restoration. There is a rebuilding of ruins. And the ruins here even include what is happening in terms of the state of the church. In the state of governance of the church, there's a rebuilding of ancient ruins. There's a rebuilding in the lives of people that many generations have missed the moves of God and they've gone astray, but yet God will restore. There's a repairing there. There is a raising of a people that will raise the standard and ensure that proper foundations have been established. Here's one of the things we will say. If previous generations had divorced, not this one. Elamaya nana. Elana nana oya. Eranda nana oya la bahaya. Why? Because the Lord will rebuild. He will raise and he will repair. Remember that it is possible that even a structure that God has built, 
If that structure moves from the mandate of God and from the purpose of God, it may be subject to ruin. Many times ruin comes because we move away from the will of the Lord. And so any house, any foundation, any building that moves away from its core purpose will be subject to ruin. The Lord help us. But there's a, a restoration taking place. God is moving the house ay, 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 into his direction. He says, I'm rebuilding my house. He says, I'm building my house. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Now, here's one of the things that God is also doing. He's giving us pillars. People who are strong, built by him. Ay, 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 ay. Let's continue. The Bible says strangers will come and stand and feed your flocks and sons of the Pharaoh. God will give us people. God will assign ministries. God will send us daughters. God will give us people that will bring what? Grace. Grace to feed. God will bring people from abroad. When you walk in your blessing, the nations will come and the nations will come they will assist because there's a building taking place there's farming taking place there's a vineyard which is being prepared pictures of the house of god now verse 6 what will they call you the world they shall say you are the priests of the lord Oh, Yamahaya. They will call you the servants of our God. In other words, a spirit of servanthood, a spirit of serving, a spirit of leading. It's a spirit that works in humility. Humility. Here's the thing you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Now, this thing, saying the gospel is for the poor, it's not true. Gospel is not for the poor. Listen, the gospel comes at a high cost. But not by any means will God allow you to be poor. You will be rich in many ways. Most and above all, you will be having the riches of God's glory. Now, verse 7. Instead of your shame, you will have double on. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy will be theirs. Let's close with this. Shame comes because of sin. Shame comes where we have not. It's almost like we've missed the mark. And because we had missed the mark, there is shame, there is guilt. We don't feel free. You know, shame can also come upon the innocent remember houses that have ruin and let's say for instance you were born and in the house that you were born in you were born it was already lying in ruins so you can have shame because of your surroundings and because of your environment here's what god is saying he's saying the following i won't allow for this generation I won't allow shame. I won't allow sin. I won't allow death. I won't allow... You can have shame because of sickness. You can have shame because of poverty. He says, I won't allow that. But this is what he says. I will give you double honor. We dealt with a series on the subject of honor. And honor has to do with the image and the identity of God that respects and aspects of God will begin to be expressed in your life. And God, if you remember in the New Testament, it talks about, it says those who, who labor, who labor in the doctrine 
and who will labor in prayer. They are worthy of double honor. Talking about the ministers. Here double honor is given to everyone who carries the spirit and the nature of God. I want you to see it. Because the spirit and the nature of God also makes you a priest. So the responsibility of teaching, rebuking, prophesying is not just for the minister. No. The responsibility is on all those who carry the spirit of the Lord to be able to teach and minister. And so now you find something. It says there will be double on. Oh. God, God, God wants to be excellently represented in your life. And he doesn't just want to give you a part of his spirit. He wants to give you the double portion. You will possess double of him. Double of his grace. Double of his portion. Double of his possessions. Now, one of the other things. It says, everlasting joy. Thank you for joy. That is eternal, Lord. Thank you for making us the posterity whom you have chosen. It's, I want you to see this. He talks about how the earth has rain. How when it has the plant, it will cause it to bud and blossom. Then he brings the picture of righteousness. He says, in a similar way, I will cause righteousness and praise to begin to spring forth. He says, a bride adorns herself. She prepares herself. In other words, she puts jewels upon herself. She does this for who? For the groom, for the husband. She does this for her day of glory. So is the church. God is glorifying the church. I want you to see that picture. The church that God is unveiling is not a church with a spot of sin. It's not a church with a spot of blemish. It's not a church with wrinkles. And it's not a church in poverty. It is a church full of the glory of God. Full of dweller of God and full of the clothing, talking about the character of the spirit. So now, more than ever, the gospel must not just speak in gifting, but it must speak in character. The character of Jesus, the nature of Jesus. It must not just speak in word. It must also now speak in demonstration. Let's demonstrate the word. Let's demonstrate the blessing of God, the favor of God. May the Lord help us that the things that we are speaking, it's things that we are building. It's things that we speak also from a place that we have been built by him. So we come into that place that nations will say you are the priest of the Lord and you are the servants of the Lord. So there's a generation arising. It's a generation with the double. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for this generation, Lord. I thank you that you've given them responsibility. I thank you for your favor. You've given us a, a year of favor. You proclaim salvation upon us. I thank you for deliverance, healing, signs, wonders, miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let our houses be filled with miracles. Let our tongues carry the supernatural to release miracles, O oh God. 
let your glory come forth. Father God, let your glory come forth. Let it be released, oh God. We thank you for your name. We thank you that your name is a strong tower that the righteous can run into and they find safety, oh God. Oh, we thank you for the spirit. We thank you for manifesting Jesus that you may destroy the works of the devil. Use us mightily to destroy each and every work, every strategy, and every device of the evil one. Ancient ruins, oh God, let them be rebuilt. Desolations over many years, let them be repaired. Raise up a people that can build with you. Raise up a people that can release restoration and times of favor, times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for what you are doing. All glory and honor belongs to you. We say you are worthy, worthy of all the praise. Silver and gold belongs to you. Thank you for blessing our households with wealth, blessing our households with favor, blessing our households with rain, that there may be plenty in the house of God. Oh, thank you for giving us the grace to set people free from prisons. Break the spirit of heaviness aha, of their minds. Break the spirit of heaviness of their lives, oh God. We honor you, Jesus. You heal the brokenhearted. Visit the, uh, the widow and visit the house of the orphan. Visit the widow. Like you did in Zarephath. Visit the house of Naaman. That even those, oh God, who are just but foreigners, will say, I have seen God. I have found God. Visit those who have been forsaken. They've been written off by the world. They've been written off by certain ministry. But visit them, O oh God. Remember them in mercy. Remember them in mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood. The blood speaks better things. We thank you for a fresh breath today. We thank you for a strong word. We thank you for equipping us by the Spirit. Cause us to walk in our callings. We are no longer afraid. We are no longer afraid. We are no longer afraid to walk in what you have called us to be. We are no longer afraid of, of God of the future. We now understand who we are. We now understand whose we are. We understand who we are becoming. And we thank you for Jesus. Family of God, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, shalom, shalom. Amen. May you have a blessed week and may the goodness of God and may the mercy of God be with you. Amen.